November 1964. After their earlier efforts to discredit Martin Luther King Jr. are unsuccessful, the FBI prepares to send Dr. King an anonymous package containing a document that will come to be known as the Poison Pen Letter. FBI Intelligence Chief Bill Sullivan himself takes some plain, unmarked paper and pretending to be an American Negro, types out an anonymous threatening letter addressed simply King. The letter began by calling Dr. King a fraud and warned that the demise of his reputation among the public was fast approaching. The package also contained an audio tape, a compilation of FBI surveillance allegedly of King engaging in multiple extramarital affairs. The document's ominous closing, according to some scholars, suggested that Dr. King was given a deadline of 34 days to take his own life or suffer the humiliation of the tape's release. The interpretation of this by the people that investigated the FBI later and by just about everybody who has gone through these records believes that they intended for him to commit suicide. The FBI sent the package anonymously to Dr. King on November 21st, 1964. But it went unopened for over a month because King was in Oslo, Norway, accepting the Nobel Prize. The first person to eventually open Sullivan's threatening package long after Christmas is Mrs. King. King and his associates, when they listen to the tape after reading the threatening letter, have no doubt whatsoever that this is from the FBI. King goes into a very deep depression. And of course, the FBI, which is still wiretapping his phones, knows about the discovery of the package and the emotional impact it has on King. If the FBI believed in early 1965 that their threat would intimidate Dr. King, they would soon find that they were mistaken. In March of that year, he helped lead the civil rights movement's most iconic demonstration in Selma, Alabama. King and other leaders organized a series of marches to demand greater federal protection for the rights of black citizens to vote. Thousands marched from Selma to the state capital of Montgomery. The first march became known as Bloody Sunday. After a white mob and state police attacked unarmed demonstrators. Five months later, King and his colleagues' strategy of nonviolent protest paid off when President Lyndon Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965. When President Johnson stood to present Dr. King with another ceremonial pen, he did so with the full knowledge of the compromising information the FBI had gathered on him over the previous 18 months. Across 1965, 1966, the FBI tires of its obsession with Dr. King's private life. In the spring of 1965, King and his family moved from one home to another. And at that time, the FBI decided not to reinstall its wiretap on King's home telephone. It seemed that Hoover and the FBI's efforts to neutralize Dr. King were a failure, and their investigation stalled. 